Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Zubair Altaf Qureshi and this is my part 6 of uh, the checkpoint firewall session come lesson, whatever you want to call it. And in this lesson, I will be talking about the feature of NATing, right? Network address translation. That is a very important topic. And for that, I would like to uh, take in consideration, consideration our topology, right? So this is the topology that we have. And uh, I have done some NATing on, few, uh, on the firewalls, remember? And at that time, I told you I'll be uh, like telling you more about these things in a later uh, video, right? So what we can do is, okay, let me grab my pen. Okay, fine. So first thing is what is NATing, right? What is uh, network address translation, right? Okay, network address. So most of the people say like from uh, like translation of private to public, right? This is what I've heard. Private to public, right? So it it is like it is right. It's not. I would not say this. Uh, it's not right, but it's not completely. Uh, it's not uh, wrong, but it's not completely right also. So. The thing is, a natting can you can do natting on a public IP to public IP, right? It's not necessary. It should be a private to public. So what happens is it's actually a mask masking of uh, like it's it's changing of IPs, right? Whether it be destination or source, right? So what is the need? The thing is, we have RFC nineteen eighteen space address, right? Nineteen eighteen. Those are called the private IPs, right? And they are non-routable right on the internet so to reach internet we cannot use those ips but we can use those ips in our lan segment right so uh, the ranges of ips that we have is i would think you would probably know obviously 10 dot 0 slash 8 and 10 dot 16 slash 12 that means 172 uh, dot 16 dot 0 dot 0 to 172.31.0.0 right so that is the network and actual actual IP would be 255.2 so that and, and then we have 192 right 192 168 0 dot anything right so this is the range that, that we have and it's not uh, actually 24 it's 16 so that is the range that we have that we can use in our internal LAN. But when it comes to uh, going to internet, these IPs are not permitted. Why is it so? Why is it so? Because what the provider does, so for example, this is the ISP router, right? They will have policies here. They will have many, many, many policies. And, and one of the policies would be deny these range of addresses. Slash eight and then like that only. So these range of addresses would be denied, right? On this. So in order to reach internet, either either we should have public IP for each of our hosts. I mean, like you can just understand, like how many hosts can we have? Like it's unlimited, right? We can have thousand, thousand, of, and having thousands of public IP was not scalable, right? So this happened in like early 90s when the IETF came to know that engineers at IETF came, came to know that we will be facing uh, scare, scarcity of IPv4 address, right? IPv4 address. So at that time, IPv6 was already developed, right? But we needed an interim solution, right? Interim solution. So for this interim solution, what was what happened was it was decided that they will go with a concept called natting right so they they designed this concept of natting and what is the it does is so the concept is the this features feature, feature en enables you to change an ip from 
uh, one IP to another IP. So what this was used mostly was to change the private IP to public IP. Okay. So whenever you have this inside host that wants to go to the internet, okay, he would go out and this netting device, whatever it is, whether a router, a firewall, would net this device to a public IP that is routable on the internet. Routable in the sense what? So for example, just just imagine this this scenario. Okay, my PC that is on 172.16.31.120. This is my PC. This is the source, right? Source going to a destination. Say say DNS Google, right? The 8.8.8.8, right? This is globally reachable address, right? Okay, source destination. So once it comes to this uh, device which has routing capability. This is my own uh, device that I ma manage, right? He knows about this IP address, right? Source, he knows. Destination, he knows because maybe it has a default gateway, right? It might have a default, in, in our case, it has a default gateway. Default gateway, right? So, uh, so what it'll do is anything that it doesn't know, it'll throw the like, default gateway. In my case, it's 192, 168, 1.1, right? 1.1. So, when it reaches the this uh, what do you say the ISP router ISP router checks the destination it knows 8.8.8.8 right and it forwards just imagine this packet going to the server at 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. okay this is the Google server and the Google server receives this packet so the return traffic needs to be the vice versa right so this will be the destination and this will be the source now imagine this google server does he know about this 170 16 31 120 no obviously no because this is not in the internet routing table right this IP. so there the problem lies right so what we do is the device that is facing towards the internet okay that has a public IP or we can uh, like register some public IPs for our uh, usage, right? According to our usage, how many servers we have, how many users we have, right? So like that, we uh, can register the public IP and then NAT th those devices to the public IP that we register from the INA, right? INA. So this is the organization wherein you have to purchase the IP. And then uh, there are types of NAT, right? You have, you have, let's let's talk about uh, NATing types specific to checkpoint, right? You have auto NAT, auto NAT. So the word itself says auto NAT, right? So that means it's man dynamic NAT, right? Automatic dynamic NAT, and you have the PAC port address translation where uh, where you can uh, you can uh, NAT hundreds and thousands of IPs to have single IP right single public IP right single public IP and and what uh, happens at the at the background is this 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 device right who's doing the NATing will have a table right of uh, table of which 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 does the uh, uh, which holds the port address translation right table. So this IP uh, inside IP say dot 120 uh, went to like source would be always a uh, like, uh, random IP uh, so random source port right so that port say 6519111 right goes to say 80 port right somewhere so reverse traffic when it comes it knows this 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 IP went to this port or so it needs to be untranslated back to this port right so like that it will keep a translation table port address translation table and and it can do this path right this is called hide NAT in case of uh, our checkpoint right so this is hide NAT and then you have the manual NAT manual NAT or you can say policy NAT so in this case you define the NAT like you have policies on the uh, on the firewall right so source destination you will have objects and you will uh, manually statically define those policy for NAT, right so we we will see different kinds of NAT and 
and I'll be demonstrating all of them in the checkpoint firewall. So without wasting much time, I will begin with this uh, demonstration. And also I'll be talking about one more thing that is anti-spoofing, right? So I'll be telling you about anti-spoofing feature of the uh, checkpoint, right? So let's let's start. And so let me cl close this. And this is the uh, dashboard of my checkpoint firewall, right? The console. Okay, so this is the console and, and netting can be done on the destination as well as source, but 99% of the uh, times we'll do source NAT and I'll, I'll, I'll show you the demo, uh, I'll demonstrate those things on our uh, Palo, uh, this checkpoint, sorry. Okay, so let's begin. So I will, let's go into the NAT and, and as you remember, right, so this PC, that the internal PC, right, the, the PC that I have here. This is having 120, right? IP config. So if you see, it has 172.116.31.120. This was added to a public IP of, I think, the external interface. I need to go to the object of this 172.16. That is my my PC object. So I'll go to this uh, and check the. I okay. I need to go to host object and check my PC and. Remember, I did this natting here. Okay, I'm hiding this hiding behind the gate. So that means the address that I'm getting uh, when I go out, right? Uh, it is the address of the gateway, gateway one, that is triple one, right? So this is the IP that my PC is getting. Translate to, let, let's, let's check this, let's check this. So I'll do a trace rt minus t means don't do the lookup to 8.8.8.8 so when this uh, packet goes through my firewall it it hits my uh this firewall right so i think the trace route is not working let's ping 8.8.8 or 8.8.8.8 right mm, awesome let's ping 8.8.8.8 Oh, my mistake. Let's ping it or eight or eight. And the traffic is going. Let's check the log. Let's check the log. Uh, let's go to this log. And I'll I'll source. I'll I'll filter by source, saying my PC is my source. And and let's see what policy is uh, like allowing that traffic to pass through and ultimately reach my internet right so I, my, my gateway one is doing the uh, netting for this right okay so this is the draft uh, this is the uh, log and this is the packet that i want i want it to be a, so my source would be my pc and i want to see this on the gateway so and uh, anyways i'll just click any one of this so this is the one just let me expand this window and i can i can see from here only that the source uh the nat right, is is source ip right so this is one type of source nat right so so what i'm showing you is right now source nat because i'm i'm translating my source right? so this is my source getting translated to the gateway so this is called your auto nat okay but this is doing what this is doing pat not nat so this is pat actually for the translation so let me close this and, and 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 i want to show you one thing right and let me just collapse okay so this is the like hierarchy like what is preferred before what so first that is preferred is the static NAT one to one, right? So when you do a static NAT, say I'm uh, I am uh, like changing my internal host IP that is my PC to uh, another IP on the outside, and that will be dedicated to that host only. That is static NAT. That is the most preferred NAT. Then you have machine high NAT, right? Again, you have the NAT. Again, this is pat when you do like I did, right? So 
this is the pad when I do again like selecting a particular machine and patting it right that I did like selecting the object and then patting it to the interface right so that is second most preferable and then you have the address range starting where you define an address range right say say a private address of 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.50 right and then you NAT it to a IP right again so that is again preferred after the machine hide NAND machine hide NAND means you specify that host right as the source to be changed and then you have net network static NAT right so that is when you define a, define the whole network right so say I will define my inside network right inside network is 172.16.31.0 slash 24 and I'll NAT it to an IP right or pat it right so that is network static NAT so I define a network that is preferred after the address range then comes the address address range hide NAT and then network range hide NAT so first is the NAT one to one uh, or or a, or a pool of IP right so that is the pool of IP and then you have the uh, hide NAT the patting rules okay so so you can see the the static is preferred whether it should it is a, a NAT or a pat right and then comes the manual rule so the policy that that's what I'm uh, I was talking about the policy NAT that is actually preferred the most because you have the power to define it anywhere right so I'll go and define it at the top so that is the one that has the highest priority in that sense because I'll place it at the top so the the table will go top to bottom right so that's the uh, thing and what we did right now was hide NAT machine hide NAT right I I did this machine hide NAT. So let's let's do uh, uh, what address uh, this network. Uh, let's do the network static NAT. Okay, network static NAT. Let's go go and create a network host. Right. So I'll call this uh, inside GW1. Right. GW1 and 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 I'll I define 172.16.31.0. Right. So that is my inside IP 255.255.255.0, right? And broadcast is included, say OK. And then I'll NAT it, right? I'll, I'll NAT it to say this IP address, say mm, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for like when uh, the external is 192, right? 192, 168. 1 dot mm, so let's do it for 1 dot 100 right okay so let's do it for this one and click ok and and publish this right so so this rule should come in in the netting policies right let's see where this pops up so i have created a network and should go to the network static net the rule i'll publish okay you can see right so it came here inside gateway one going to wait a second i'll just explain this to you so here you can see the actual rule this is the five fifth one so my original source is my my network right whole network and destination is any obviously and the translated source would be this uh gateway uh, you can see right here you can see a static s here you can see hide NAT H and when you click on this you can see the source on the NAT here so this will be my NAT but then again uh, my machine NAT is actually preferred so when I go to the uh, gay manager right let's let's see if a manager goes outside what it prefers I'll, I'll push this to my gateway one yeah okay any of that and and I don't remember what I have done to the let's let's check for the manager what I have done is uh, host and no, no, no. I need to check for my manager so I'll put here and here and I'll see what I've done for my manager if, if again that is 
and NAT. No, I've not done any NAT for my manager. Okay, let's close it. And this should take the 192.168.1.100 address when it goes out. Okay. Uh, let me install this policy. It's publishing uh, to the other admins and now i'll install it on gateway one right yeah and install this on gateway one so now the policy has been pushed and let me go to my um, manager where's my manager sms server right here let me log in with admin and admin one two three and let me ping let me ping gateway two that is 172 16 no no no, no. That is 192.168.1.112. So that should be, uh, should be right. Okay, there's a problem. Let me just go and ping my next stop, right? This is 192.168.16.31.111, right? This is my gateway. I'm not able to ping my gateway server. Let me check about the configurations on the uh, manager. If I go to gateways in this servers, I will go to the GUI of my manager actions and open a web GUI. I will go to the web GUI. You can go like this also, or you can go to and go to the web browser and HTTPS advanced and proceed. And the username password is admin one three. Let's check. Uh, the I should have a default gateway. And uh, okay, I'll just unlock this okay go to ipv4 static routes i have a default gateway that points to my triple one right and what about my interface from the top right and, and and the dns it has been configured okay i think there is a policy that is denying this pin right so let me go and just refresh this log and check if I can see anything that is going from my manager. Uh -huh. So yeah, this was the ping that went through, and the NAT is one dot two ten. Okay, that has been NATed. Uh, anyways, the the NAT is successful, but it's not reaching the internet. And, and this is the, I think I, I, I typed in 120 or 210, let's, let's see. Okay, I have to go to the policies and go to the NAT and see what was this. This was this and NAT was 100, right? Yeah. So this is another one, same thing. Okay, let's try once again. Let's try another thing from my manager, right? I'll go to GUI, uh, not GUI, I'll go to the shell. Uh, username is admin, password is admin123, right? Login. This, this piece. Yep, I can go and I can ping 172.16.31.1. Let's ping and then mm -hmm. let's ping the dot. Okay, let's ping my gateway 192.168.1.1. Okay, I'm able to pick and get it. Okay, let's go to the logs again and check what uh, IP this is getting translated to. Let's 
So this should be my source, should be my manager. So gateway one, and I cannot see. Okay, I can see this thing. Let's 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 check the um, destination column. Right, add filter, and this should be one ninety two one sixty eight or one one. one. Oh, so this should be my destination. There is no match for this destination. I think that ping has been allowed by the. Okay, let me check this. Global properties. Oh, yeah. So I C M P was here, and I'll be logging this route. Okay, now let's see. I'll push this to my both gateways, <clears throat> and I'll just explain this to you. If if this is the reason. Mm. I'll push this to my gateway one first. Install. Make this policy to be installed. So now the policy has been installed. Let's let's try once again the same thing, the same uh, ping, right? I'll go to this and actions and open the shell. Admin admin one two three and do the ping once again. Ping one ninety two one sixty eight one zero one. Okay, great. And let me just stop this. Control C. Close this. Go to my logs. Refresh. And it should come up now. Yep. So this is the reason. The policy that was allowing this was the implied rules, right? So we have the implied rules that I showed you. Uh, you can check them from the properties and go to go global properties here these are the implied rules and when remember when i allowed the icmp so this allows the to and through but this is not logged so you cannot see this is logged so now that i have enabled logging you can see this in this right nat rule number five so i have to go to nat rule number five that is translating this traffic so okay, let's go to security policies NAT, and this is the rule number five. This is translating this uh, IP address, right? NAT, and then I have done the static, right? Static to this range actually. So this range, any IP can be taken. So from 100 to like the complete range. Okay, so this is your, uh, the network static net okay if i do this to hide right behind this ip single ip so this will go to this uh second one uh, after the uh, static net let's try this okay and then i i will publish so then it will be it will be doing port address transition so the ip would be 100 that time so single ip but having multiple ports so let's open up this one and i'll install also this on my gateway one wait for the policy to be installed so now you can see it went to the high network height NAND, right so i have the inside and then i have this thing so now if i check the same traffic it should go via 1.1 1 .1 only sorry it was 100 right Open shell and login, and I'll try pinging. Let's try 8.8.8. .8 .8. It should also work. I don't know what happened there first time. Anyways, uh, let's close, go to logs and monitor, refresh once, and 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 the destination is this. And I see, I can see it was an echo request. Now you can see, right? So this was your network hide NAT, right? So you have seen the network high tag, network static net app. Like and and the other goes the other two goes has same, right? You will have address range instead of your network, right? So that is that is that. And then you have the machine height net that I've already done to my PC, and then you have machine static net, right? Static net. We have this been remember we did the same on the other side, right? But this win, uh, machine static NAT is also called destination NAT. We use this as a destination NAT. Okay, so, so let, let me just explain this destination NAT concept to you guys. 
for that I need my uh, diagram okay that is here and I need my pen okay fine so what we use this destination that for is if say you have a server here right you have a server here and this is a say, DNS server and then you have another server here this is your uh, say PFTP server your file transfer protocol file transfer protocol server right and this is your domain name server then you have another server right here this is your web server okay and then you have another server here they can be multiple or hundreds of servers inside a corporate right and this is a forward farm say you have an email server like that you can have many servers right so what you do is you have this on your private IP range right and your 6.0 this is my 6 right the Windows PC and this can be like 100 this can be 200 this can be 210 this can be 230 right? but say the people on internet want to reach this IP they, these services they want to access these services but they cannot access this on this private IP range right 10.6.0. whatever range right they don't have access to this public uh, uh, private IP, IP range so so what you do is you represent these servers on the external uh, like the public side of the network with a public IP right so there can be two cases either you can assign single IP single public IP to all the uh, servers like one for each say for example you have this 192 168 1.0 slash 24 range right in this I have given 200 to the Windows 7 right Windows 7 remember in the previous lab and then you have the triple one and triple two taken by the firewalls right and then I have this hundred given to my NAT like that so whatever IP has been left right so you assign this you do an uh, like assignment right you, uh, you do like 192.168.1. say 50 50 goes to this is, is actually mm, link to this 10.6.0.230 this is your email server so on the internet email server has, has been represented by this public IP say this is a public IP I know this is a private IP but you have to assume this as a public IP right? so so on the internet my email server is is represented by this dot 50 IP right? likewise you can assign another IP to 168.1.60 right? this is being assigned to the 10.6.0.210 right so if, if anybody wants to reach to this uh, web server he has to go to this IP on port 80 okay so that is the thing and and what you can do is this is your static NAT right you, you, you call it destination NAT also DLAN because if you if you just think it like from the from the client on the internet right this is my PC what is the packet that it sends to this um, web server say web server so uh, he says my source is like anything right it can be like 2.3.1.2 right so this IP is source of his machine that is reachable by internet and he is trying to reach what email server right? email server is 192.168.1.50 right he is trying to reach this IP so guys this is the destination right when it, it reaches this this gate uh, this firewall right so it should change the destination not the source right so that's why we do a destination map data right so this firewall does what it changes the destination it keeps the source as like as it is like two three dot one dot two right and and sends it to uh so it re received on 192.168.1.50 and it switches to the internal one 0.230 and it goes to this server 
and then serve replies goes back and while going back this static net is actually bidirectional or you can define again a rule for this reply traffic so what ip it should take while going out so you might have some uh, rules in your nat natting table right so likewise this this server would have a default gateway that points to this uh, 112 right so it can and the traffic can leave again back to that uh, the original uh, source right where the uh, traffic was initiated so this is your um, destination net and then again you have another uh, concept that is the like for uh, you can say port translation or port forwarding right so there are two things port translation and the other one is port forwarding So this is where the manual NAT, the policy NAT is being used. Without a policy NAT or the manual NAT, this cannot be achieved. Manual NAT, right? So this is the purpose of manual NAT. So what happens is, again, let's let's just imagine you have those servers, right? You have the web server, you have the DNS server, you have the TFTP server, right? So, but then you have only one IP here outside, 192, 168, 1. Say 160. We have this IP only. Say your company has only this IP left in the pool, right? So you don't want to purchase any more IP. So what you do is, uh, so this is 230, right? Inside IP, this is 260. Say, oh, oh sorry, 260 cannot be there. <laughs> okay, and then you have this as uh, say 220. Okay, and this is 210. So what you do is, this is your web server, right? Web, so it's listening on port 80, okay? This is your FTP server. This is on 67, right? Port 67. Likewise, you have different uh, applications listening on different ports. So what you do is, you tell the, if, if you're using the default ports, inside and outside right default ports inside and outside that is called port forward okay that is called port forward so for example this again this person on the internet wants to browse to the web server so he connects on port 80 http or https port 443 so this is listening for both right so what happens is it comes on 80, uh, went, uh, goes through the firewall and leaves as, as 80 only. The destination port is 80 only after the, it travels the firewall, right? So that, that is called port forward. So one more thing can happen is, so, so say for example, you have load balancing. Now just imagine, you have load balancing for the web server, right? I've seen so many guys are like asking for the same thing so you have this these two servers right who are both are like web web, web servers mm -hmm. and this is like another mm, say email server or not a load balance you say so you have you are hosting multiple servers right so what you can do is this guy, if he wants to reach to um, this server, right, on the same IP, but he wants to, uh, this is listening on 80 and this is listening on 443, so you have different servers, but he wants to go to this IP, now, so this is 230, say 230, and this is dot 231, right, so what he do, does is he, he points to this IP, this public IP 192, 168 1.160 right but he uses port 8080 so whenever the firewall sees 8080 it sends the packet to this server who is hosting 80 so this is 
called port translation because the port, uh, port number is getting translated after it, it is crossing the firewall, right? 80, 80 to 80. Likewise, if you have, um, if this guy wants to go to the HTTPS server, right? So he'll do, uh, you might have seen 8443, right? 8443. And when it passes through the firewall, it goes to the 443. So this is called port translation wherein the port gets translated from the original destination port to a different one that is in the inside right so we'll see this i'll demonstrate this also in the lab that we have right so that was that and let's move to the next topic that is our static net right the static net and the destination net So in order to demonstrate the destination NAND, what I'll do is this is on my Win Win 7 client PC that is behind my Gateway 2, right? So I have installed this uh, TFTP client wherein I'll be running this server, okay? And and what I'll do is you can see you have server as well as a client, and I have installed this on my Windows PC here also, wherein I have this, and I'll be running this as a client. And allow this. Okay, I'll be running this as the client and and I'll be just you know uh, trying to fetch a file from the other side of the uh, uh, from the other side uh, uh, behind gateway the windows right you see through the through both the firewalls you have the firewall one and the firewall two right so let's let's do one thing uh, in 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 the settings I have defined the current directory as uh, as my say I'll go to close this I'll go to my documents uh, see okay migration and my documents so this is my uh, uh, this directory and I'll create a file here mm, it will be a text file say demo and inside that I will have hello this was the demo for static Oh, sorry, static NAT, or you can say DNAT, right? DNAT, DNAT slash, like in, inside, let's say static NAT, right? Static NAT. So I'll, I'll just save this file, save and close it, right? So I'll just fetch this file from the outside. And in order to do that, I need to go to my uh, gateway, no, the, this windows and open the console so i need to go to the policies okay i'll create a i already have this host right i already have this host okay i'll, I'll just go to this home and i'll check host i have this in seven client right? let's check what ip that i i statically assigned to this okay this was 199 let's let's do this for 200 so on 200 if i uh receive uh if i go to 200 it should translate me to the 6.0.6 uh, right we'll check advanced server right so you have what mail web and dns all those settings right? so let's do okay so so my PC, right, should go to this, uh, so this PC, okay, let me just push this policy on the, on the gateway to, I need to push this on the gateway to, right, let's see, okay, and, and then, and then inside to outside, I have that inside outside policy that will allow my, uh, Traffic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's push this and and I'll go to my Windows PC here. I am on the PC and I'll go to this and I'll browse. So this is a bit complicated thing where in you have to go to that folder. OK, 
okay say mm, i will go into the documents then i have to create a file that should be so i i'm i'm fetching a text right text file so i'll be creating a text file here i don't remember whether it should be the same name or a different name let's let's try to keep it as a different name or let's keep keep it as as the same you can try this while you are demonstrating right demo.txt and you can see this is like blank right it has nothing inside so what i'll do i'll go to client i'll type the host 192.168.1.200 right that is the ip and the port is like 69 that it is listening to and the local file that i have i have to specify this and the uh, remote file that i want to fetch is the same right with this with this name and then i say get and i say yes right over it so now i want to see if uh, like which firewall blocks this traffic uh, like i don't think the file was uh, like received let's go to logs and and just check i think i need a policy in my gateway one or gateway two because this is okay i can see gateway one is dropping it and let's check and why and see why it's dropping it. so what the source is my pc destination is this my pc is going to 200 and why it's blocking policy is this uh, and this and this and this and it's not getting natted my pc should be getting natted right to 200 i think okay 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 let me check the uh, uh my pc let me see the natting address that i have so i'm natting it behind this and what about my nat controls here that i did earlier my pc this one was inside gateway this was the so let me just delete uh, this one i did a hide nat okay, i need to go to this gateway policy nat and then stop it okay gone and then my pc is getting natted to my address good Let's push publish and push this again. Install policy gateway one. Okay, guys. So the problem here is that I'm not loving any traffic of TFTP, right? So if it's if you see in the Okay, let me close this let me go to the gateway one policy the policy that we have in out right it doesn't say anything about tft so i need to add this service tftp right add this and install on firewall one So now that we have created this policy on gateway one i'll push this policy to gateway one install and i think i need this policy on gateway two also install i'll go to gateway two and then i need to add into out this is into out i need a policy from out to in that is uh so I'll create a new rule below. So let's say FTP. <coughs> FTP traffic source would be in this case. Let's keep any for now, or else we can keep that server IP. And then we have this um, destination is my this client and services is TFTP. 
should be allowed and should be locked okay and then i'll push this policy <coughs> to my youtube Okay, let this uh, policy be installed in YouTube 2 and then we'll resume this. Okay, so the policy has been installed. Let's go to my. Okay, this has failed and let's uh, once again check the file that I have here and see it's uh, blank. Yeah, and I'll do the same thing and say get and okay, and I have received the file. Repeat. So let's go to my documents and this file is empty and this is the file that I received from my side. So if you go and check on the <coughs> gateway uh, on this and check the log here so you should have a traffic here with the tftp so you have this traffic and see let's see so the uh, source is the gateway's ip because that was knighted there hide not right and the destination is this ip and on gateway 2 right here this was done on gateway 1 and on gateway 2 what was done is it was translated to this address using the rule number 2 right and the travel access rule was tftp traffic and and thing is the port number that it uses is udp 69 so i think I, in the explanation i said 67 so the sense corrected and yeah so this is the uh, demonstration for the destination map likewise you can just change the port, num port numbers on the other side here okay if you go to settings here you can change the port number right wherein this is listening okay so great so that is done uh, so th that was NAD. You, I have uh, shown to the source NAD and the different types of source NAD and the destination NAD, auto NAD, all those things, right? So, and the next is the policy NAD. So for that, you can do is you can create a new policy right here and say you can you can say here also above. So you should keep it like on the top. So you can have for the source you can have the wind client, right? So you can drag and drop this here. And you keep the original destination services and translate a source. You just uh, assign an IP address to this, right? So you can say gateway gateway two, right? So this, and then translate your addresses same, right? And then you push it. So this is your uh, manual NAT, right? Where then this will be uh, giving the highest preference, like that. So that is your manual lab because you define it as a as a policy right not to go not to go into a object or creating an object and define the NAT rule right? so that is your policy NAT, and that is given the highest preference right? so that is the NAT part of the checkpoint and and also i wanted to show you about the spoofing right spoofing what you uh, you need to do is to go to this and uh, go to the gateway properties double click here and you can see an uh, option for spoofing. Uh, spoofing. And you double click on the interface, right? You get this anti spoofing. It is enabled by default. And what happens is anti spoofing means somebody from outside is pretending to be somebody from. From the known networks, right? From the 172.16.31.1, and and how how uh, he can uh, if if somebody does that, actually the traffic flow on uh, on checkpoint. Uh, the first thing that has uh, that is checked is the anti-spoofing rule, okay? And by default, that is turned on. That means if if the firewall on the external interfaces receive any IP from this range, right? Or uh, so it will drop it because it knows that this IP source will be residing inside, not outside, right? So that's how the anti-spoofing rule really checks the traffic. If 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 the source it's it's seeing in the packet as 172.16.31. Anything in the slash 24, right? 
so it will drop it because that should not be received on the out, outside interface that should be received, received on the inside right so like that it checks the packet and drops uh, in case of if there is any spoof pa packet that is coming from outside right so that was the anti-spoofing uh, feature for checkpoint hope uh, you guys like the video and uh, uh, and you, if you like the content of the video, please do subscribe to my channel, share my videos, and like my videos. Thanks, thank you, guys. I'll I'll see see you in the next video. Bye bye.